UK government drops plan to officially define Islamophobia. You love to see it. Okay. Recently, the United Kingdom government quietly abandoned plans to create an official definition of Islamophobia. Three years ago, amid mounting pressures to take action on the rise of hate crimes against Muslims and the scandals allegedly exposing Islamophobia in the Conservative Party, a decision was taken to define the term officially. In 2018, the all-party parliamentary group defined the term as, quote, a type of racism that it targets expressions of Muslimness. Labor, Liberal Democrats, and other opposition parties accepted this definition, but the Conservative Party rejected it. But Michael Gove, the current community's secretary, reportedly opposed the definition, stating, quote, it would be very difficult to get a precise definition of Islamophobia. He added, there are dangers if a university or another organization, which should be home to should be the home of free debate, uses a definition like that to police what people can say in order to penalize them for it. Wow, well, wait, he, who's saying this? That makes too much sense for government official to say. He's who's the current this? community secretary of the Conservative Party. What? Okay, cool. Yeah. Go on. Well, the abandonment of the plan received criticism from various British Muslim organizations, some MPs from both Labour and Conservative parties, and many ex-Muslim individuals and organizations supported the move. I wish it wasn't coming from a conservative, but okay. Yay. That's where we um, are in the UK right now, okay? We have to take it. Oh, yeah, actually, con UK conservative. Um, yeah, I mean, conservatives usually have bad arguments for these things, but this is generally like credit where credit is due. Like, this is generally the reason why you shouldn't have these things. However, I do want to highlight the fact that anti-Muslim bigotry is a real thing, okay? Um, yes. And, and should be challenged, okay? Mm -hmm. This... This Islamophobia nonsense is not the way you challenge that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's what's really important here because um, a little over 40% of all hate crimes that happen in the United Kingdom are against Muslims. And it's the largest percentage of any group that experiences hate crimes. So that's very significant. And that is something that genuinely does need to be addressed. And the state does have an interest in addressing this, right? But using the term Islamophobia to go about tackling this is really counterproductive. And I don't understand why existing terminology for religiously based hate crimes is not sufficient. I'm, I'm okay with them coming, adding new rules that makes us focus on something that's a problem. Okay. That's um, not what I'm saying. I'm like, why can't you just use the language that we already have? Because sometimes you need to add extra language because something is a specifically problematic issue. But 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 to your point, which is correct, is that the main problem with Islamophobia as a term is that it's, it's such a disservice to Muslims because it's taking their hurt and their pain and using it instead to defend them and misdirects the attention to any you know, criticism or um, any joke in expense of their religion. Like it's, you're like, oh, look at these people being attacked. Like, oh, let's do something about it. Like, oh yeah, let's protect Islam. And like, uh, wait, what? Like, no, like you, we, you, you miss, you, you're using Islamophobia and misdirects the, the energy, the focus and the resources in protecting something that this whole thing started was not the reason like at the beginning was not the reason why we started this and in initiating th this whole project you know what i mean it's kind of like oh be scared of this like oh yeah this is scary and then all of a sudden like no we're moving to a different direction like do you not see what why what what we're trying to do here like it uses people's genuine desire and care to protect other human beings against hate but people who and actually it's it's actually very evil okay because at the same it's not at, um, saving Muslims. It's not helping Muslims. It's protecting their feelings and it's protecting their religion. But at the same time, you put red, you draw the red lines in places where you know there will be a lot more crossing of it. You know what I mean? Like any attacks on the Quran or the Muhammad or any drawings of Muhammad, all of a sudden 
you if you categorize all of that as Islamophobia in a way that if it was anti-Muslim bigotry, uh, none of that would be categorized under this umbrella. Now you have a lot more um, excuses for raising the alarm for like um, and telling people that a violation has have happened. So silence and dissent, essentially. Yeah, and also increases the your importance because there's so many things that are Islamophobia. Less things are anti-Muslim bigotry, right? But this will make wh- wh- whatever institution, uh, whatever body of people are responsible for monitoring this will become more relevant and more bigger uh, and, and bigger and with bigger budgets if they were going after Islamophobia instead of anti-Muslim bigotry. So there's actually um, the interest of the people involved would be to silence, to be going more in line with silencing this dissent rather than protecting people but i'm glad that you know thanks to a lot of ex-muslim activists by the way in the uk okay because this is this is them make being involved by the way you guys this is what getting in being involved in politics gets you right so therefore all the atheists or ex-muslims are like oh why are we involved in politics why are we organizing why are we becoming political why are we creating communities this sounds like so much religion well this is why okay because these things don't happen in a vacuum these things happen because of certain people constantly fighting to make it happen so good job to anybody who's responsible for this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um do you think that this government has a responsibility to come up with an alternative phrase i mean the term anti-muslim bigotry is pretty good anti-muslim bigotry like i think a lot of canadians were suggesting like canadian politicians were suggesting that so i don't understand why don't you yeah. This guy is partially also getting criticized basically for dropping the issue in general and like not working towards providing an alternative. It's like, okay, if you don't like what the other parties have accepted, okay, but are, like you've been put in charge of managing this problem and you're not providing an alternative. So they I, feel like I, it's just mm-hmm. not taking the issue, the genuine issue seriously at all. Yeah, I think like I be, I don't know. I have to look into more into it. But based on what I know, I would be in favor of actually suggesting something like anti-Muslim bigotry, especially because if you don't address the problem, this whole Islamophobia thing is going to get suggested back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you need to create a program that is not anti-Islamophobia, so that so that you show that you're addressing the problem. So that's, because if you don't, somebody eventually is going to come sneak this back in. I'm if, I would be in favor of actually having a program that looks into anti-muslim bigotry what do you think about the definition of islamophobia that they had wait which was quote a type of racism that targets expressions of muslimness what is that i mean that's what the hell is that like a type of racism you can tell it was made by some yeah i mean there's a contradiction here racism is targeting people based on their race and then Muslimness is not, I mean, do I have to say it? Are you going to make me say it? Because it's so cringe to say it now. Say it. Say it. Okay. Do it. Muslim is not a race. Like, are we still <gasps> at that point? Huh? Like, are, do we still need to say that? I mean, most Muslims are not Arabs. So what are you talking about? I mean, okay, in, in, in the UK, they're Pakistanis, most Muslims, mm-hmm. right? So if the Pakistanis are being targeted, just say like, I don't know, anti-Pakistani, like racism, if that's what it is. I don't understand. Right. That is a large like, part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, yeah. Islam brags about the fact that Muslimness is not tied to one race. But like the woke narrative would be that Muslim practice is racialized by being identified as coming from foreign nations. And it's of practices and expressions, clothing, food yeah. from I foreign understand nations. That, but you understand that that's how the racism gets mixed in because it's racial. That's lies. completely true. That's completely true. Okay. But you're helping that. You're adding to that by defining it that way. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you are joining them in racializing religion by saying like, anti-muslimness is racism yeah trails is coming up with a good point he says under that bizarre definition the traditional northern indian clothing that 
Pakistani women wear suddenly becomes muscleness. Right. Yeah, it kind of begins to encapsulate xenophobia at large. <laughs> Is xenophobia? Yeah, actually, you're right. Actually, the right term would be because it's like it has foreign foreignness to them, right? That's called xenophobia. That's not called racism. So you could be like Muslimness. If you're saying Muslimness is something that they associate with the other, you know, xenophobia. Racism is specifically identifying someone's race as the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, you might think we're nit- nitpicking, but if you, you have to know what problem you're dealing with if you before you deal with it but well, you have especially to be able to identify correctly. coming up with yeah. a term like this that sets a precedent yeah. it's extremely legal important. precedent legal precedent it's important for you to identify this accurately <laughs> it's not like i understand how people are like oh people are being hurt why are you being so nitpicky over their definitions because they will have legal consequences and you're not going to be able to protect those people if it, this is actually this is not even for for us to we are actually saying this not to be able to attack Islam more efficiently. We're even saying it for the sake of Muslims. Okay, for the sake of their Muslims, it would be better for them if you define this as anti-Muslim bigotry mm-hmm. rather than Islamophobia. Mm-hmm. Although, oh my gosh, I wish I could remember. I remember going through the reports on the hate crimes against Muslims in the UK and how there was a rise during the pandemic. I can't remember what it was. I remember we talked about it on this show and I actually went through the data and some of it was like really, there were some instances that felt like such a stretch in terms of what they were defining as an Islamophobic hate crime. I can't remember the details though, but I remember like, wait, this is all getting included in the same thing? Yeah. Real life is Rebecca is saying, I've noticed that in recent years, a lot of things get called racism that are not racism. It seems that the meaning of the term racism has changed. Yeah, but I do think liberals are doing a good job at fighting back against it. Like it it was going cuckoo for a while, but I think like we're like liberals are actually moving forward to like reclaiming the actual meaning of racism. So I don't know. no. <laughs> well, you know how I've been feeling lately. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I understand there's still a lot of cuckoo out there. but You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.